and the individuals knowing who they are as well. It was on that same workshop that I noticed a sunflower that was buzzing with so many bees around it. And in my humanness, I expected that that sunflower, if it had feelings, might feel a bit bothered by so many bees landing on it all at once. So that was my projection. And I went into the state of stillness, intended to connect to the sunflower, and I asked the sunflower, how do you experience the bees? And the most beautiful answer came that my mind interpreted into the words, the bees kiss me with their awareness. Mm. And that's how the sunflower experienced bees, being kissed by the bees' awareness. So the most amazing visceral experiences and often very simple and profound wisdoms and truths are available by connecting with nature. They're short, but they're very sweet. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. The question is, have I had any communication with sharks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, for the documentary, they wanted to include a shoot with me free diving, no wetsuit, no tanks or anything in the ocean off Cape Town with great white sharks and to have a shark approach in an attacking manner and for me to talk the shark out of it. So <laughs> I said that if we did that, it should be the very last sequence we shot because <laughs> anyway, circumstances didn't, didn't lead to that. <laughs> um, but yes, I have connected with sharks. They are highly, highly intelligent. They absolutely know what they're doing and why they're doing. They are not aggressive towards people. But the way sharks test objects is by biting them. That's how they test. They have an amazing sense of smell and they test things by mouthing them. You know, they'll bite first, think later. And that's what often happens in so-called shark attacks. They take a little bite of a surfer, probably spit it out and think that's a bad idea and don't come back for more. <laughs> but unfortunately, a little snack on a surfer might be fatal for that surfer. So yes, I've had many communications with sharks. About a year ago, the city of Cape Town um, employed my services to communicate with all the sharks in the area because they were considering a shark net. They wanted to know how the sharks felt about the shark net and the, the, the problems with that. Many, many sea animals die. They wanted to know how they felt about research programs that are taking some out of the ocean, tagging them and releasing them. They wanted to know why the sharks were inshore and close near some beaches. And the answer to that was, because the Navy, not too far away, had a certain configuration of beacons they were sending signals to in their testing, and the sharks were literally attracted by this electrical activity. It was very curious to them, and they were always going there to find out what it was. They were attracted by these electric signals from, from the beacon. Yeah, And many, many surfers um, speak of sharks being kind, you know, gentle, just curious, and just simply in the water with them. And sharks do feel our prejudice um, against them as well. The, the man who wrote the, the book and the movie, Jaws, he passed away a couple of years ago and um, he was terminally ill for a while, so he had time to write an open letter. He wrote an open letter that was published in the press where he apologised most deeply for what he had done by writing those stories. He says he apologises most deeply, it's the worst thing he's ever done. He is so very sorry because of what it has caused. Um, and the distress that sharks are suffering as a result. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, in your recent communications, um, have the animals been saying anything about the global climate change? Or, mm -hmm. I mean, um, have species been communicating to you and, and, mm -hmm. and wondering what's going on? Or have you been telling them things? Or what mm -hmm. has there been anything happening? Because. Mm -hmm. Do you understand my question? I do, thank you. Okay. Perfectly. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, they do literally experience the oceans, oceans heating up around them for those that are in the oceans and the drying up of water holes on the lands. Um, so they know what's going on. They understand it's because of our rampant resource abuse. So they understand that we are responsible, but they wouldn't really have the feeling of blame. I'm just always so amazed at the compassion that all animals show towards us humans. I'm amazed there hasn't been some major uprising against us because there are several species that could injure us if they wanted to. But they absolutely understand that we're kind of lost ourselves, that us humans are lost. And they have such compassion for our lostness and are so concerned for our souls and for our well-being, even though they are at the receiving end of a lot of the very ill effects of our actions. 
and they know in many cases that extinction of species and their own demise and or horrible situations or swimming in a toxic soup that the ocean is these days is causing them physical difficulty, illness, pain, discomfort. And yet they are very accepting as a, as a quality of being. They absolutely accept uh, what is happening. Um, but they are very aware of why it's happening. Animals, too, perform many functions we don't even know about. For example, the elephants' migratory paths across the lands actually follow major energy grid lines and ley lines. And so, too, the migratory paths of whales and dolphins in the sea follow those same magnetic lines and ley lines, essentially holding together the, the grid of the Earth. So there's such a stabilizing role that the animals are playing by being on the planet. And we've got no idea what we're doing by tugging on the strand of the web of life. The whole web does shake and they all feel the wobble. So they do know um, if, if they are going extinct, it isn't some overt decision on their, on their part. They're not saying, well, we've had enough, we're getting out of here, you know, so long and thanks for all the fish, to quote Douglas Adams. <laughs> um, they're not deciding to leave. They are leaving as a result of our, our actions on a, on a physical level. Yeah, and yet they stand in compassion and are very willing to connect with us and to still just, even through their distress, show us what we're doing. That's why more and more these days, in recent years, beachings are happening on very populated beaches. Beachings of sea, sea animals are happening on very populated beaches so that many, many humans are around and very aware and get touched or moved or inspired to at least consider how they're living their lives. It doesn't mean everyone has to dash out and be an activist in the doing sense. It does mean we can think about what chemicals we're throwing down our drains at home, what resources we're using. It does mean when we sit quietly on our own, do we sit with good thoughts and good feelings or do we focus on the negative? These are all things we can do. We can also be involved in many forms of sacred activism, which would be right from the comfort of our own armchair, meditation, like happens for the bees here and for nature, prayer, whatever modality calls to us, this is how we can really make a difference. Most of all, we need to be that difference, as Gandhi said. Thank you. We have time for one more can, question. Can I, about domesticated animals? I can't see. I is, okay. Uh, and especially horses. Yeah. I mean, their awareness and their connection mm. to humans must be stronger than the wild ones. Mm. And especially horses. And I want to, mm. want to hear about your experience with those. Okay. Uh, domestic animals have travelled quite a journey out of being wild um, and come to live close with humans, often against their will in the beginning, um, but now much more willingly also. First of all, I find it an amazing act of trust on the part of domestic animals that they've given over even their most basic right to feed themselves by just trusting someone will come home and give them food because they're locked in a house or in a paddock all day. So even their most basic self-determining right has been taken away from them and they trust us. Um, speaking in more general terms, over the course of history, I've often got messages, well, I have messages that animals have come out of the wild to be close to humans to help us get in touch with our true nature again. So it's often as if domestic animals are the bridge between us modern humans and our own wild nature, meaning our nature's inside. And it's often through having direct contact with an animal of any kind, an animal at home, that we just relax and be or that we come to hear ourselves, our real selves speaking, that we come to know our own nature. And so they're a very, very valuable bridge and the most fabulous companions and guides as well. Yeah.